Wanna, yeah, yeah, I've got to have a wee, mate. I've got to have a wee. Oh, what's this coming in? Oh, it's the jumbo coming in. Okay, okay. Go, go live now. Go live now. Go live now. Are we able to get rid of that, Jilly? Are we able to get rid of that? Okay. Eli H, what a time to join. Eli H will never forget joining Big Jet TV as a jumbo jet arrives at East Midlands. Yeah, I see it land to service with people.
Qatar? Are you going to say Qatar? Okay. Yes. Aerologic triple seven. Okay, so that will maybe go here as opposed to down at the east, down the east end. That was me. <laughs> Ooh, two tankers uh, getting ready to fuel her up. What, today's or yesterday's? That's what noise. Are you talking about this? You talking about this? <laughs> I do have mini rolls in my pocket. <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Aviation game with cargo jet 767 over you from Heathrow. Uh, thank you. Keith Cornell, Simon Ice 41, Ian Roper, two tankers taking a lot of fuel. Yes, she is heading back to Cincinnati. So that'll be about, um, I'd say she'd be uh, probably about 100 tonnes, maybe 100 tonnes of fuel to get back to Cincinnati. Uh, I'm not sure, but that is a lot of fuel. Eli H, why did they stop flying the passenger version of the 747? Well, Eli, um, the... The, the, the passenger variant of the 747, uh, the life of, of, of the aircraft was brought forward as a result of COVID um, because uh, the, the, most of the um, uh, airlines that were operating the 747 passenger jet were already planning uh, to, um, to retire their 747s, not as early as what they did, but over the next few years. For example, uh, British Airways um, probably would have been continuing to run their 747 fleets for at least another three, four, maybe even five years uh, uh, if it hadn't have been for COVID. Uh, uh, Virgin Atlantic already had their 747 fleet planned for retirement, um, I think by the end of this year. Um, but uh, it, it is a great shame, uh, but COVID did, did bring that forward. Uh, the 747, uh, let's take COVID out of the equation, had it carried on the way it did. It's just purely down to uh, efficiency, age of aircraft, and, uh, and, um, and uh, the, the, more importantly, the, fuel, the, the efficiency of the aircraft. And also they come to the end of their, their lives, really. Um, so, 
So yeah, it, 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 Eli, it is just a case of um, unfortunate circumstances that have that have that have brought the the, the 747s being uh, put into retirement, um, put out to graze, um, or out to uh, to um, what do you call it? Out, out to pasture, which is a great shame because it's not like they've been ro they're roaming around free uh, in a, in a field somewhere. Um, unfortunately, they're uh, a number of them will have obviously been um, uh, converted, will be uh, converted, um, like Virgin Atlantic 747 fleet, uh, with Atlas Air taking on uh, three uh, of their aircraft and one for spares. Um, whether they're actually going to physically convert any of those aircraft to cargo aircraft, I'm not sure. Uh, it would be uh, because we did hear that they were going to be utilised as troop carriers. Um, but... Um, you know, you just have to weigh it all up at the moment. The um, the cargo uh, cargo market is in massive demand um, from primarily the uh, the um, the the commerce um, sector. For example. Um, these 747s um, with cargo logic uh, with cargo logic they have also landed a massive contract with um, with uh, look at that beautiful thing oh, he's shy why don't he run away like that? Um, okay okay Fair enough. So to give you a little look at what else is also um, actively parked up. The last time we were here, we had the uh, one of the one of the crew giving us a wave, didn't we? He stood outside. He was on Instagram, wasn't he? Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah. It was the it was the Kalita, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's right. knocking on the door but nobody's opening it are they hello Joe Patton where where's Joe Patton Is that to my right? I 
I just want to get this door open. Oh, there we go. The little two windows are open. Which? Who is it? Oh, we come to pick up some freight from you. Hold on a minute. I'll just open the door. <laughs> What's that over the top of me, man? That's loud. Is that that 767? Wow. That's something climbing away from me, isn't it? Going out from Heathrow, yeah? Oh, was it? Oh. Silkway was carrying seven, uh, Formula One stuff. Where did they, um, where would they have... have um That will be DHL as well that would have handled that. Yeah, Baku's the Grand Prix this weekend, isn't it? Or next weekend or whenever it is. You see all the DHL containers there. This is possibly a DHL shipment, I think. The Cincinnati DHL shipment. We'll have a little look and have a look and see. I don't know, man. I've got no idea. What's all this? We'll have no shouting here. Local shop for local people. I think I know. I think I know, yeah. I've got a, a FedEx 767 yonder, but she's just parked up and probably. I don't mess around with these, um, doing a mess around with these ULDs, man. They're, be they're big old ULDs, they are. But all DHL, isn't it? That's how, how demanding the market is that DHL have had to bring in the likes of Cargologic, um, this, um, seven, this 777 that we're, um, that's inbound at the moment. That's five mini rolls I've put down my neck in the last flipping three minutes. That's just ridiculous. Oh. James Bloggs saw an article today that DHL are setting up a new airline in Austria and that the UK 757s will transfer to that. DHL will acquire 767s and 777s and do US and Asia. Wow. Petra van der Dries. Good afternoon. Keith Brown. Are you local? Rab H, he throw after this, Jerry. <laughs> i tell you what, though. I'm going to be met with a very, very angry, furry face when I walk in the house because I forgot to put down his biscuits that I usually give him in the afternoon. Yeah, so he's going to... He's, <laughs> he's all right, though. He's all right. Beep, beep, beep. Right, let's see if we can see these guys up on the hill side. All right, let's have a little scan. Well, I'm not going to get it. Oh, is that them there? 
I'll give them 20 seconds to see themselves being seen themselves. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Where's the rabbits? Where's the rabbits? We demand to see rabbits. Hey up. How's it going? Um, uh, the usual stuff. Nothing, nothing massively special. Be great if there was an MD11 coming in, but. Where's the blue and white one taking off? Oh, uh, probably not till about ten o'clock. <laughs> Wish I was as well. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Katie Sell, do they put any cargo in the normal hold? Yes, Katie. Very good question. Yes, the um, the belly freight. Um, that may be, uh, she may not be carrying belly freight. They may be offloading the belly freight. Um, there, there is belly freight access on the other side of the aircraft, on the, excuse me, on the right hand side of the aircraft is where the belly freight comes out of, so as to not disrupt the, um, <coughs> the operations for the main cargo, as you can appreciate. So at the moment, I can't see whether there is any uh, belly freight coming out of that, but it more than likely is. I would imagine. But good question. Very good question. Abby Garvey last weekend, <coughs> an Air Baltic landed at Aberdeen Airport. Joe Patton. Joe Patton, can we get a sticker? Is that the geezer on the on the hill over there? I'll have to frisbee it across to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're more than welcome to come and get a sticker, Joe, if you want one. Uh, but um, I don't know how you got over there. I think you've probably parked and walked. So um, if you're still there when I'm going past, then uh, run out in front of me. <coughs> Dude, what are you doing, you <laughs> Just run out in front of me and uh, uh, or, or, or wave me down. If you're still there, I'll, I'll pull over and you can grab a sticker off me. Of course you can, me old mate. Ralph Skyperian. Uh, Ayrton, oh, is that Ayrton Beatty? Um, Ayrton Beatty, uh, who's, is it husband or brother or someone flies the 380 or something, is that? No, I get it wrong every time. Oh, they work in Formula One. I didn't know that. Oh, oh, blimey. Oh. <laughs> Philip Thorley saw a video of the Volga Dnepr AN124 in Malta yesterday. That's the one that we haven't done yet, is the AN124 with Volga Dnepr. Um, we just have to keep, we just have to, the thing is, folks, you know, there's a lot of people in, 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 in the aviation sector and in many sectors of outside of the aviation industry as well who don't quite get it with the live streaming stuff. Um, the amount of, when I, when I first started doing this, I also thought, wow, wouldn't it be great you could, um, you could, you could, you could create a company where you can go to bands, you know, like, like, like big rock bands and say, right, okay, well, listen, um, I know you want to fill a stadium, but you've got millions of fans overseas as well. So why don't you um, uh, set up a, a website or, or do it on YouTube and charge people to watch your live um, your live show um, so you can bring in more revenue? You know, so um, for a fiver, somebody can watch your show or 20 bot $20 or whatever it might be, uh, depending upon how popular the band is and how much demand there is. But at the end of the day, you know, and no, it's, it's, people didn't buy it, and now, of course, everyone's doing it with the uh, with the whole COVID thing uh, coming in. But um, in the aviation industry, and I'm going to be quite blunt here, folks, there's a lot of lazy people out there. I will say that um, there are quite a lot of pe people out there who just they're, they're quite stuck in their ways in their job, and they don't want right, to really go beyond all, over the limit to uh, to 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 to. to um, to bring in extra business in terms of, you know, they've, they've got a job to do and that is their job. And if, it, if, if they have to think outside the box, then mm, they're not really all that interested in doing it. And unfortunately, you know, I've got to be honest with you, I do come across a lot of people like that in the industry who are just, they're like, you know, they don't get it. They don't quite 
get it. Um, uh, especially companies that are, that, are re that are quite small, you know? Um, they, they don't sort of like um, appreciate how, how uh, effective and how, um, uh, uh, um, how, how much coverage and exposure that they can get. And of course, what we do is we offer it all free of charge. We don't charge um, anybody to do anything. If we were sitting over there with DHL or with, with Cargologic or with anybody around here, with FedEx, with um, uh, UPS or whoever it might be, with Virgin Atlantic as well, all that stuff that we did for Virgin Atlantic, no money changed hands. We did it all for the love of aviation and um, to obviously bring you um, uh, content because that's what it's all about. That's the key to this whole thing. And um, that's why sometimes, folks, you, it's very stressful because you do f feel yourself banging your head against a brick wall. Um, and the trouble is that a lot of the times also, these jobs where these folks are, they change hands quite often. They move on to another, um, uh, onto another um, uh, sector or whatever it might be, go and sell shoes or something like that. Um, uh, a, a, a perfect example of somebody who does think outside the box and somebody who, who, who it worked with was with Virgin Atlantic, with, with Gareth. Because uh, Gareth, as soon as I called him, he was like, yeah, man, um, I've, I've heard about you guys. We want to definitely do some stuff with you. And that's how that whole relationship started. Uh, and the stuff that we've done with Cargo Logic in the past as well. And all the other people that we've worked with. But sometimes even though you've worked with people sometimes it's still hard um, to, uh, to 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 make them appreciate that everything that you're offering them is for nothing so um, again another perfect example the Hyatt place in London the hotel they immediately understood when I sat down with them and explained to them all of this is 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 to the point where you could almost don't even need to spend any money on marketing I can save you all that money uh, for you making any kind of advertising. I know that Hyatt as a business, as a company, will always promote um, the, 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 the chain of Hyatt hotels around the world. But for an individual hotel like London Heathrow, for example, um, you're sort of like um, it's down to you as the owners or uh, or as the the leaseholders or whoever you might be, whatever uh, way in which the, the company is uh, is 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 uh, that the hotel is owned? Um, it's down to them to create their own marketing campaigns and so on and so forth. And what I've done is I've come in and I'm exposing, um, f especially for a, s a specific sector, uh, a, a audience of the market. You know, of people who will come and. Uh, 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 pay money to stay at that hotel and utilize the facilities that they've got and and it's great because they got it we all get it we're on the same page so it's a very easy thing to to to, to continue on with you know because i mean you know they contact me i contact them blah 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 but you know a lot of the times also it's the airports as well it's difficult to get through to the airports because at the end of the day folks it all really boils down to the person at the other end of the phone or the person whose email address you've got. Now, whether they're into it or not, because there's a lot of people who work in the aviation industry, folks, who don't, who are not even interested in planes. So therefore, their, their connection, the, the way I'm trying to connect what we're doing for them, it doesn't quite, they quite can't quite see it because they don't, they're not in that sector. Uh, when they go home at night, they just kick off their shoes, have a glass of wine and watch telly. They're not really into planes, you know, like like we are. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, that, that you should have a vested interest in your job uh, or the or the or the or the category of your job. You know, if you're into selling, if you're into selling cars, for example, you've got to be passionate about the brand that you're representing. So therefore, if you're working for an airline or for an airport, you've got to be kind of passionate and I'm lucky enough to have met so many people in the industry who are passionate about aviation uh, and who love their jobs and, uh, and and really enjoy doing what they're doing but unfortunately on the other hand I still do come across um, the lazy sods unfortunately who 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 who, who disappear off into the in, into the night because they, they they aren't committed they're not passionate and therefore their interest wanes after a certain time doesn't it 
you know. Uh, and they're like, you know what, I think I'll go and do another job because um, I'm not getting satisfaction out of this, which is completely understandable. You know, if you're not satisfied, if you're not happy with the, with the job that you're working in, then um, you're better off uh, exploring another um, avenue, aren't you? Anyway, here endeth the lesson. Uh, Ricky Granger. That's nice for Ricky Granger, isn't it, to uh, come on uh, as soon as I as soon as they become a member, they see some bloke harping on about whatever this that, and the other, blah blah blah. <laughs> Flipping it. Is all Monty? I work on the oil rigs, and I'm not passionate for them. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But I'm talking about I'm talking about. Uh, working in a in, in a in a in a capacity where you're representing the company um working for and representing as in like at the forefront of a of a media team or or people that that you would expect in your business to look after you and bring uh, opportunities to the company to expose them to get them more business and spend as little money as possible in the in the in in doing that you know um it's very simple very simple James uh, saying the world needs 747s. Hopefully they don't stop making them. Well, James, I've got some very bad news for you, mate. Uh, the last 747, due to roll out of the, um, the production line at uh, Everett in, I think it was, it was supposed to be 2022. Um, they might extend that on a little bit further, but there's, um, I mean, unless of course, unless of course, um, Boeing have been um, uh, 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 given uh, more orders uh, to, to, to make the aircraft uh, down purely to this uh, the, pa the pandemic. However, there are a lot of 747s um, uh, surplus to requirements for in terms of passengers, uh, passenger jets that um, could um, for a, 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 a a very small fraction of the cost of a new one be converted to freight and the airframe would still have enough hours uh, on it to uh, to justify having it converted um, P2F and there are of course as we know specialist companies that do that I mean uh, as you can see there the um, the only um, the you can see that that particular aircraft that you're looking at there is a pure freighter that came out of Boeing's factory um, as a freighter jet it's it's not it's not it wasn't previously a passenger aircraft um, there's a couple of giveaway uh, telltale signs of that firstly there's no windows on it um, if you have a p2f aircraft uh, it will still retain the windows uh, we see that a lot with the uh, 747 400 freighters but this particular one as you can see she's got the short uh, hump on her, uh, almost the same as the sort of uh, 200 or or 100 hump. Very short indeed. Um, as you know, the the, uh, the 400, the normal passenger jet has the extended upper deck on it for passengers. But of course, because they don't need it, it's more a fairing than anything else. Uh, because of the the cockpit being where it is, you would need you need a fairing to go back and sort. Oh, so they use that fairing uh, to accommodate uh, the crew rest area. Um, behind it which is what those uh, what those windows are there that you can see um, but apart from that in terms of converting a 747 into a freighter uh, that door that you're seeing there is uh, is what needs to be done to the aircraft in order to um, to make it into a pure freighter um, so that big cargo door there um, they literally um, have to cut right the way around the aircraft um, strengthen it and then the door goes in as a, as a, as an, an, as a, a standalone assembly. Uh, they have to reinforce all the way around the uh, the body of the aircraft, not just where the door is. And of course, the flooring has to be um, uh, uh, torn out of the uh, of the old one and reinforced. A new flooring has to go in and be reinforced um, uh, in order to carry the heavier freight. Because obviously, you know, when you when you're talking about carrying passengers it's a lot less weight than carrying uh, heavy freight having said that you know these um, these these ULDs unit load devices you can see there um, are uh, 
are relatively light compared to like when you're carrying car parts or uh, or heavy equipment uh, this is all mainly um, well I say mainly you know I mean this is these are all packets of of different um, different assortments of general freight so they will weigh something I mean you're talking about close on 80 90 tons of freight that you're carrying on that jetliner um, some people asking why is there a, is there a, 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 a why is it chiseled or angled uh, with the with the freight with, with the pallet you can see that there's an angle on one side of the pallet that is uh, primarily well that is purely for the uh, for it to slide as tight as it can to the um, to the the body of the aircraft so that it can meet the contour of the aircraft because uh, obviously if, as you can imagine you can't put a square box in a round hole god bless you blimey O'Reilly Barry Frost is a new member welcome Barry and Michael Newick great place Newick Sussex is a lovely little village uh, down here in Sussex cargo jet uh, Terry Slater do we have cargo jet inbound I think uh, oh cargo jet oh wow Uh, Ray Rosen, loved your show at Manchester, the 380 was fantastic, wasn't it just? Uh, Kev Parker, uh, Wally Cooley, uh, good day to you Alex, I have flown from East Midlands to Bulgaria, there we go, Rob Jacobs. Oh okay, uh, Rob Jacobs saying too late now to order the 747-8 freighter, even if an airline wanted a bag full of them, as all the suppliers to Boeing have now sold off, scrapped all the tooling and machinery needed to manufacture the parts. Really? I guess, yeah. I mean, in terms of spares, you know, um, they will need it, they'll need to be fabricated um, as a separate. Item. Well, they've all so have they? Wow, Rob, that's amazing. Uh, Heli M, the cargo jet 767 arriving to EM in May today is the same ex Air Canada jet that we saw at Heathrow a while ago and has, has the dodgy finish on the fuselage. Oh, okay, so the unfinished um, uh, fuselage, ex Air Canada was still with the, uh, the peppermint colour, uh, still visible on it, and um, possibly even, you know. Um, the patches where it said Air Canada on it. Uh, thanks for the info, for the info, Heli. Tony Island. Uh, Ian Lyles. When that jumbo landed, all four engines had the res, res, reverse thrust. Come on, but the three only, only three eighties only have two instead of four. Why is that, Ian? Um, that's um, that's down to the fact that, in fact, somebody mentioned um, earlier on that um, apparently uh, Airbus when they were building the 380 purely down to the fact that it's got so many wheels um, and each wheel is a braking um, has braking capabilities so you think of think of how many wheels it's got um, is it 38 or is it 26 uh, four, eight, 12, uh, I can't remember um, but uh, all of those wheels, um, together with the, uh, the, 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 um, the speed brakes on the wings, are good enough to bring that aircraft to a halt. Um, and, and in hindsight, I think, I think Airbus were pro probably quite happy that they did fit reverses to the inboard engines. They were originally saying, well, we don't need reverses, but um, the customers actually turned around and said, you know, it would make us feel a lot happier if you did put reverses on, the, on at least the inboard engines. Um, so they compromised, and um, that is the reason why they only have two reverses on the 380 as opposed to four. Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you, the chances are that uh, if there were re reverses on the outboard engines, I mean, this was just um, something that I sort of like theorised a long time ago, was that um, if they did have reverses on the outboard engines, uh, when, they, when, they, um, when they applied them, especially in dusty conditions, um, that would make a hell of a mess of the side of the runway, um, the edge of the runway where it meets the grass. Um, that would kick up a lot of debris uh, onto the runway. So probably meaning that they would have to, uh, you know, um, 
inspect it more often. Uh, Michael Newick, there we got you. So Ian, I hope that uh, hope that explains why the A380 only has two reverses, as opposed to the four, um, because the jumbo jet obviously uh, has uh, less uh, wheels on his wagon, so to speak. Still got a, a, a fair amount of speed brakes on her, um, and um, uh, a fair amount of braking on her, but less wheels and. Um, those uh, CF6 engines, I think, are powering that 747. A lot of freight coming off that thing. Uh, Watford FC, hold off on booking the Hyatt just yet. Anybody who wants to book the Hyatt, please don't book um, uh, on uh, uh, through booking.com or anyone like that or any other uh, third party. We, you will. It's best to wait until we've got the code for you. Um, they have told me that a few people have, you know, tried to book uh, via um, third party websites. And it's, it's, it's just a good thing not to do that because obviously you cannot apply the discount code through third party websites. You've got to wait until we've, um, until we've got that set up. It should be soon, folks. Airbus AF1. Uh, Air Force One is currently being built. Budget has been blown. ETA is to be determined. I thought that Air Force One was using, I thought they were using X um, Aeroflot 747-8s, weren't they? I thought they'd um, taken Aeroflot's aircraft. And maybe, maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe they haven't been built yet. Russ CT. Cargo Lux 747 up high, over the top. Not going to catch it, Russ, again, um, as per the normal situation here in the UK right now. Um, bleeding clouds everywhere. OK, looks like that might be... Offload completed. Now, is there stuff going on it back to Cincinnati? Oh, hello, folks, here we go. Is a favourite amongst a lot of people. Here we go, here we go. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the, I'm going to move the mic to That's what we were doing. Nah. It's pretty obvious.
Oh, is it? What into Heathrow? This one heading to Schiphol, I think. RB211 turbo fans. One of the first um, of the uh, high bypass ratio turbo fan era, the RB211. That's it, baby. Head on. Head on. A little bit of a power up. One thing I noticed when we were at uh, Cologne, when we were up close to the uh, 757, how small the, the access door is. Now you see that's a P2F conversion look. You can see where the windows once were. Sometimes a little bit difficult to see, but uh, that's a converted aircraft, ex-passenger jet. I think British Airways actually, uh, some of these uh, aircraft ex-British Airways as well. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Hello. This should look good going out. It's always a great shot from this angle. Oh, Danny Rubel, ex American, uh, that 757. How about that? Aviation gamer, yeah, very good point. Um, good chance that she's gonna, she, she'll, she'll, she'll probably um, about where she is now. I think. Um, well, actually, maybe a little bit. I think when she's almost, I think when she's almost uh, where where that bleed in um, windsock is. I think that's where it's uh, where she's going to climb out. A uh, Russ CT seven, a uh, triple seven on uh, penultimate turn for here 10,000 feet now dc8 approaching miami es saying oh look at this is a is it is it an intersecting departure as well yeah. which is good 
Okay, so that means it might be a slightly longer run. She's not going out full length. Show us what you're made of, girl. interesting is that uh, the jumbo um, looks like everything's done on the um, main cargo deck wow she's high man look at that 3,800 feet per minute or something stupid like that isn't it banana uh, it's got no filling in it Rob Jacobs uh, just watched it on my screen departing and now looking out the bedroom window need to get out more <laughs> is there a Coningsby art gallery in London Melody asking now that's an interesting I mean I google that because I've got no idea um, uh, Jerry Hattrick, Smoky Port Engine. Yes, she did, didn't she? Uh, aviation game are going to be awesome seeing the 777 freighter. Yes. Aerologic, isn't it? 777F. Um, as well as that, in addition to that, a uh, cargo jet. 767, is it? Inbound? I could maybe ask... Uh, Uh, Michael G. Kelly, yeah, 777 Freighter, Aerologic, due in soon. <coughs> oh, I haven't seen that, Alan Gale. Have you ever seen the Royal New Zealand Air Force display with their Boeing 757? They chuck it around like a fighter. <gasps> wow, that's crazy, isn't it? That goes to show them that how, how, how overly engineered these aircraft are Boeing do definitely build them tough that's for sure 10 year old Aerologic 777F inbound from Leipzig Autism Emily love the Aerologic I've got one in a model there we go Aerologic freighter as a model uh, does that mean that with the freighters you get I guess you get the you can have the doors hinged open or or Dan uh, can't you Polar Air Cargo 767 inbound to Jerry Jazz M telling me. Thank you, Jazz. Ben Brown. I'm hoping that the other DHL 757 goes out. Uh, that's an A300, the other DHL aircraft parked up over there. I think you'll find old chap. Oh, am I on an engine stop? Yeah. 
Ben, I think you'll find that's uh, one of the old proper old bangers over there. She's a uh, A300, possibly CF6s. And this is another one parked round the corner or something, I don't know. You behind the bait sheds, stand still at it. Cargo jet 767 just hitting west coast of Ireland. There we go. Bluebird 737 400 taxiing out at Keflavik for EMA during two hours. Oh, no. um, I don't know. What is it? Uh, 20 past 7, 20 past 8, 20, yeah. It's 20 past 6, yeah, sorry. Russ CT incoming, Aerologic 777 FZN Leipzig on final turn and thence to finals. Love the way he's put that, you've seen that, Jilly. And thence to finals. Okay, there is another 757 here. Okay, so is that, where's she that? Is she down the other end on the, um, is she on the, um, is, she, is she down at the East uh, Hub? Or, uh, or is she? Is there another? Uh, is there another facility on the back? Is there? I don't really know. Mick Daubney, Aerologic entering finals. Thank you. Tony McCall says it looks like it's tech. It's been there a few days. So where have they put her? Is she in a hangar? There is a hangar here. Uh, I don't think there's anywhere around the back there. Um, maybe f over the far side of the airfield? No. No? UPS 767, due in one hour, 49 minutes incoming. 777 on final, Steve Wishart. There she is, she's in view now. 380 question from Jay Savvy. Are the outboard engines set at a different pitch or angle compared to the inboard engines? Even the 747 looks different. I think you'll find, um, uh, Jay, uh, that they do look um, uh, slightly angled uh, upwards. Um, but I think you'll find that um, I think you'll find that they are in alignment. It might be just a hot Achilles use. Jay Savvy, uh, maybe worth Googling that. I may be completely wrong. There's a 757, FedEx 757 parked up over at the east side, Jazz M. Yes, there is. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> FedEx 757. Reg on it? Can't see any reg on it. Blocked away, unfortunately, I'm afraid. Okay, here we go. Aerologic. Last time we saw one of these was uh, night operations at Munich, wasn't it? At Cologne, sorry. Come on, son. There we go. There she is.
actually hear them shut then. So this is kind of the start of the evening session, isn't it? The UPSs, the aerologics, possibly more DHL. Um, UPS. Alan Davis, welcome back, Alan. Good to see you here. And he's upgraded to executive. Good to see you, Alan. Welcome back. Good, good logo, Aerologic. It all oh, actually maybe last time we saw Aerologic, possibly was at Frankfurt actually uh, when we went there between lockdowns, wasn't it? I think um, I think they were only parked up. I don't think we actually saw one moving, but. left-hand side of your screen. Big old set of 115Bs on her. Alan Davis, good to have you back, Alan. TCC one clean cargo plane. Um, Aerologic are um, German based, are they not? German based Aerologic. Um, I think they're part of. Are they? Are they? Are they not part of the DHL group? Yeah, there we go. DHL and Lufthansa Cargo, yeah. I thought they were, um, yeah. Leipzig and Frankfurt. Paul Marriott, shared to two EMA groups and cargo traffic. deck cargo doors are um, situated on the left hand side um, it's uh, standard on uh, on freighter aircraft this is a pure freighter as well I think 200 F 
for what, for the 95th time. Aviation game, a good question. What tripod do I use? Benro is the uh, tripod I use. Uh, are, you, are you saying it's very, very smooth? I hope. <laughs> uh, aviation gamer, yes, there we go. Uh, Dean saying two Norwegian 737s go, went to Kemble this morning. Not sure if it's the end of their days or just storage. Well, I have to be honest with you, um, when you see aircraft going down to Kemble, it does usually signify that it is the uh, uh, end of life. Uh, however, um, they will keep them there for a short period of time to determine whether or not they can be um, sold on, possibly again. Uh, the 737 is a very popular P2F aircraft. In fact, probably one of the most popular um, in terms of uh, short haul um, capabilities. Um, so possibly those aircraft may be Jilly just telling me in my ear that apparently there's news that they might be saved again. Um, but yeah, Kemble is, is generally a um, a facility where aircraft will go to um, well I'll leave it there uh, Ian Harris I think you'll find it is by chance yeah they've had uh, they've had quite a lot of prop up financial rescues uh, over time haven't they um, but um, yes, Ian, very, it's very interesting that all of the listed arrivals and departures for EMA are Boeing aircraft. Um, well, Ian, there is an Airbus A300 sitting over there, so I don't know if, um, if uh, that's probably not on the list of departures, I see what you mean. There is an ATR-72 um, parked up over there, or is it 42, I don't know. Um, but uh, just wait for this... Uh, main cargo deck door to open on this cargo logics, uh, aero logic seven, uh, triple seven. Angela Cooper, I've got chat on mobile. I feel so lazy not nipping up there. <laughs> 15 minutes away. Well, sit back and relax and watch it on your, on your TV, Angela, or on your phone. Oh, Mick Daubney. Yeah, this was the base for um, British Midland. BMI, wasn't it? BMI baby, wasn't it? BMI. Was that British Midland? Was that was that here? It, East Midlands. Uh, 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 BMI. That was at uh, no. That was at um, that was at the other. East Midlands, wasn't it? That, that, sorry, that was at Birmingham, wasn't it? The airline, BMI. BMI Baby, you remember? Yeah, they, were, they, they did have, they did, op did operate from a, a number of UK airports, but uh, there you go. No. Uh, Andy Sokolow, uh, good question. It's the uh, General Electric GE115B. Uh, it's the uh, larger of the two variants of the General Electric power plant that, uh, that power the 777. GE90s on, the, uh, on some of the passenger jets. On the extended range and freighters and the 300, you get the 115,000 pound thrust power plant. Um, uh, primarily because of the uh, extra weight that it needs to carry. Oh, it was at EMA, right, okay. Adam Stokes, thank you very much indeed. The A300 Park Ben Brown in front of Jerry was the sixth last A300 ever built. Wow. It's only 14 years old.
That's what I was talking about. Wasn't that one on the bank where he lost an engine? Yes. Oh, okay. What, here? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Then I've got my geographics wrong in my head then. It was EMA. Um, because it must be, the end of the runway must be quite some way from the M1 then. The M1's to my right, isn't it? Is the M1 to my right? I'm on the north side of the airfield, okay? And I'm looking, I'm looking west at the moment. I'm looking west. Well, I'm actually looking southwest. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I see. Right, fair enough. Norman Gray, good question. Would the aircraft have enough power from their reverse thrusters to reverse under any... reverse under their own power like some military aircraft? Well, Norman, um, I'm guessing that under... In, 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 in situations where uh, they had no uh, option but to do that, I guess in a, in a crazy scenario, uh, they would probably be able to do that. But, um, you know, you're talking about using reverse thrusters um, that would probably cause a lot of havoc <laughs> around on the apron. Yeah, just Brit British Midland. Yeah. Well, BMI Baby was, 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 was their brand, wasn't it? Was a brand, BMI Baby. Kev, pa Kev Parker, the maintenance hangars are on the other side of that building. Oh, okay. So they've wheeled around there, have they? Okay, so. Are we talking about possibly around the back of there? Uh, okay, between that uh, line up there, or is it further around over there? Let's see if there's any route through there, but uh, obviously it's all an optical illusion, isn't it? That kind of stuff looks all closely packed together, but it may well be far enough packed up. Um, I just thought that, that the other side of that building was where all the trucks would be um, loaded up with rubber bullets. Um, and there are a, uh, a couple of hangers there, which are, I don't know, not big enough to store a... Uh, tail, we wouldn't get a tail in there, so I don't know, unless there's something over the back, there seems to be some high, it's a high arch there, is that maybe, what did, oh, <laughs> Neil Gandhi, thank you very much indeed Neil, today is a prime example why I subscribe to this channel, that's very kind of you. Uh, aviation talk, yes, that's um, as a racetrack, um, very um, long established racetrack to my right. Raceway, isn't it? I think. Okay, Rob Jakers. Uh, the hangars are behind the DHL complex and used mainly by West Atlantic now for maintenance, and also a few based biz jets are parked up in them as well. Okay, so there are hangars behind them. Let me have a look on. Um... Okay, looking on um, Google Earth now. Oh. Okay, 
Okay, so let's just have a look here. That's the western Blimey. That's quite interesting. Oh no, that's why, because of that. Is there? I'm looking on Google Earth and I'm not seeing any aircraft hangars behind that facility. All I'm seeing is where all the part where all the trucks are normally parked up uh, for loading. Um, like I said, over to my left there, there are some. Uh, yeah, I think if it's going to be anywhere, the, yeah, I think if it's going to be anywhere, that seven five seven that. Uh, you folks are all talking about she's going to be over there uh, somewhere um, there is a taxiway that leads down there almost opposite here um, let's just have a look here there's that one there and there's another one there that taxiway there uh, that one there which runs down alongside those um, sheds there and uh, to the right are um, well there's one there's one relatively quite a big apron uh, which is this closest one to us here um, that's a very small shed, shed there but that shed there the big one that big long one there is um, looks like that has a side opening facility uh, where they're possibly able to um, wheel the front end of an aircraft in but certainly not all of it in other words it's tail section as well uh, so maybe that is like you say where that that other 757 is parked up is that uh, stuff now I don't know whether that is uh, stuff going on that jumble or what See if I can get hold of Matt from Cargo Logic. Oh. <laughs> Gareth from Virgin. Hey mate, word on the grapevine about a nice shout out from me here, mate. <laughs> Always give props to the folks that that uh, you know who are hard workers. That's the thing to do. Um, an absolute pleasure to you, my friend. Okay, cool. That's cool. <laughs> nice password. Jacobs, yeah, behind the hangars are behind the DHL. I think you, I don't know about that, Rob. Uh, the only reason I'm saying that is because if you look on Google Earth behind that facility, uh, it's all uh, loading and unloading of, uh, or actually loading up of trucks. Well, yeah, loading and unloading, and that's the sorting facility uh, in there. That's all the sorting facility for DHL. Um, I don't think there's any. Uh, don't think there's any maintenance facilities behind there. I think it's all opposite where I am right here. Uh, maybe further on down the field as well. There might be a couple of maintenance units down there. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Uh, Andrew Allen, yes, I am. Top of the lane with the pub at the bottom. Dean Kovacs, Armchair Spotters Unite, EMA call live with commentary. <laughs> well, not a great deal going on, but if, you, uh, if you're into watching planes being offloaded, knock yourself out. Good to see you here, Dean. There we go, Ben Brown, two 737s are only six years old. So there we, are, there we have it. So they will be um, moving on probably to an, another Lee C or... Uh, it's interesting that they've stored them down there, though. Mm, yeah. Uh, Gary Bayliss, uh, it is... Um, It is, it is, uh, hold on. I think they call it Castle Donington, don't they? Uh, but you're right, it is Donington Racetrack in the background, Mr. Bayliss. Uh, Rema T is a new member. Welcome, Rema. Good to see you here. Hope you're enjoying your day. Oh, uh, interesting to see the A300 has now got his uh, wing lights uh, lit. Let's just see if the APU is running, which it is not. have the crew door open so uh, crew access door open let's just have a look and see what's going on with the cargo logic so Carl Hanlon saying Norwegian are saved but with only 51 aircraft um, interesting See, there's a, uh, there's the uh, completely rounded. ULD that you can see there fits perfectly within the contours of the aircraft. So different ULDs for different, uh, for different aircraft types and different positions within the aircraft as well. Manchester Airport spotter. How was Manchester earlier? Good, uh, actually, um, to be honest. Quite surprisingly um, active in terms of biz jets, primarily. Um, but uh, wow, what a treat. Um, two 777s landing. Uh, the Dreamliner with Etihad uh, in the Choose China livery, um, which came in and went out during the show. And of course, all topped off with that beautiful big a380 which was just phenomenal I guess is the word that I would use um, especially that head-on shot of her coming towards us uh, John Ingham tuning in from Lambeth doing the Lambeth walk oh, yeah. 25 aviation the MD at Kemble has already confirmed uh, the two the Norwegians are in storage for up to 12 months, not for scrap. So there we go. Um, that's good news. Uh, I remember the, I, I remember meeting um, with uh, one of the guys down at Kemble, and uh, he did mention that um, you know uh, aircraft will be kept there and uh, run up uh, regularly until a, a buyer is found. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, then they will uh, 
they will they'll get they're given the option to be moved on so yeah and, and with Ben saying that they're only they're only a few years old um, yeah chances are that they're they're going to be moved on to another passenger uh, carrier which will probably be who who knows as they're here in the UK maybe uh, I don't know who's got the money um, who wants uh, who wants Jet 2 maybe TUI have already uh, started their max program so can't see that's uh... makes you wonder doesn't it makes you wonder Oh, Ben Brown, it is an ATR 72. I didn't uh, think that it was a 72. There we go, John Carley, two, uh, two Norwegians, only seven, uh, six years old, yeah. There we go, sorry. Dom, all Norwegian 737s at Campbell are in for storage. So there we go. Oh, Andy Coates, been cleaning out my dad's modeling shed uh, and came across a BOAC die cast of it. Uh, can you please give me, oh, t my text has just gone. Okay, well it is um, ARD, or was that what he was looking for? Uh, Alan Davies, do they convert? Um, my, my, t my, my chat's going all weird, Julie. Uh, Nathan Girard, welcome, Nathan. Um, am I miles behind on the comments here or something? Sorry. Gel, tuning in from South London. Good day to you, Gel. Matt Fowler, Nathan Girard, what's the max load? Um, are we talking about the 777 freighter? I think 90 tons, is it? Uh, 90 tons is the maximum um, capacity uh, of the aircraft. That's not the, that's not the uh, MTOW, the maximum takeoff weight, because the MTOW includes um, everything, uh, which is weight of the aircraft, uh, fully loaded with fuel, etc., etc. Matt Wyatt, the loading guys just waved at you. Did they? Okay, uh, Ben Brown, if anyone's going to take on those 737 from the UK, Jet 2 is a likely contender since they still have a few old 737 300s. So there we go. I did call it, but um, I'm just saying that because uh, they're the only sort of like 737 operator that I can think that are not um, uh, operating the MAX or, uh, for instance, Ryanair um, are moving over to the MAX program, TUI as well. Yes, I was, yeah, opposite me. Yes. Yes, that's what I just said. There we go. Yeah, and that's where they park their helicopters up as well. The close-up shots at Manchester are something else, Ravage. So, great you enjoyed it, folks. Uh, no, there was somebody asking me about the name of your, the, 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 I don't know, the company that you use. I mean, is it looking for decals or, uh, I'm not sure. There's another refueling truck just turned up. Um, probably another 40 odd tons of fuel being pumped onto that jumbo. Loader with the green high vis. Uh, okay. Well, the guys on the FedEx uh, one at uh, at, at um, Cologne were, were waving at us, weren't they? 
So, you know, they were watching it on their phones. Smell manure. <laughs> One of the pilots at the front. Cargo. Definitely, I'd rather be a freight dog than a PAX pilot. Yeah. Free die. As they are sometimes known. TCC, the ULD looks like a greenhouse for growing tomatoes. Fair comment. It does. <laughs> well, the rounded ones, anyway. Dan Grange, good afternoon to you. Uh, PJ is a new member. Welcome to Big Jet TV, PJ. And train and plane spot. Uh, is a new member on BJet TV as well. Lots of new members joining today. Welcome everybody. Glad to have you with us. Uh, two shows today, one from Manchester and this one from EMA. Just to show you a little bit of a cargo. Movements. Now you see they may be sitting there waiting. But that... that with that um, crew member at the front there um, being where he was, kind of makes me think that this aircraft may well be turning around relatively quick. Um, I just like to make things up like that because I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Never works. Uh, you and Lee, would you rather be a cargo pilot or passenger pilot? Um, yes, most definitely. I think, to be honest with you, I'd rather be a, uh, uh, a cargo pilot. Um, partly because I think I prefer it, but also because my dad was a, was a, was a freight dog. He was a uh, freighter pilot, so kind of would want to carry on the old tradition, the family and all that, you know. Oh, James Price, uh, when are you back at Manchester? I saw you today, but didn't get a chance to come over. That's a shame, mate. Ian Cummings saying, all those ULDs are empty. Uh, does that mean they brought ULDs over? The ULDs will then go into the sorting. Um, you see, you see, this is, this is something that's, that, that is, is something that, that, that could possibly have happened. The, the, the Cargologic 747, um, from Cincinnati was carrying um, freight um, was carrying DHL uh, commerce freight There's a, there is a chance that that freight has then been uh, taken off then goes through into the sorting office gets split down into, um, into its relative destinations and part of that may be then uh, being loaded into the ULDs that came off that Aerologic 777 and therefore that's going back to either Schiphol or, uh, or Frankfurt. I don't know. Uh, ben Brown, DHL 767-300 freighter pushing back at Leipzig for EMA now.
Mick Daubney, Cargo Logic over Snowdonia. That's not coming here, is it? Chris Evans, since the 19th of May, that Aerologic has been all over the place. China, Thailand and India, just to name a few. But must be fun flying those things, yeah. That cargo guy keeps eyeballing you, Jerry, Keith Koff saying. Are you seeing much clearer than I am, Keith? See stuff coming out of the um, out of the belly freight now. You can see just through the other side. That's the belly freight being being unloaded. So you can see they would have uh, offloaded the um, the main deck cargo first, um, because if they had have offloaded the belly freight from the front, that could have resulted in a uh, a discrepancy in the centre of gravity. Uh, hello, some long pieces coming off now. Interesting. I got a bit excited then. I just thought, just for a moment then, because of the, the way the plastic was blowing, I thought, oh, it's a Formula 1 car. Oh, no. <laughs> they wouldn't put it in a piece of plastic like that. It would be in a box. You stupid boy. Michael 89 or Michelle 89 I'm wondering as a non-local are you local um, how long was the drive from London up to Manchester two hours and 57 minutes I mean we're talking it's, it's three hours is, uh, is the uh, is the general uh, drive time um, another hour and 30 to here and then probably about another hour and 30 back to uh, base in London this evening Oh, Leslie's saying that maintenance guy was waving at you, Jerry, and flashed his light at you as he drove off. Okay. I'm missing all the action, aren't I? Uh, Andy Sokolow, what, wondering what's in those containers. Well, um, I can't understand why a freighter would... Maybe that is... Sometimes they would fly in with empty containers that need to be loaded um, with, uh, with commerce. Oh, I see a, uh, I just spotted a tug. Now, where's he going? Sneaking up behind there. Is it the 300? It's turning. It's turning. Has he ended up for the 300? He is, you know. There we go. There he is. Hitch it up, boy. <laughs> Sounds like an old dumper truck, doesn't it? Riding along in a farmer's truck. Sorry. Mark Hudson, yes I have. <laughs> uh, Craig Whitmore used to get Herald F27 shorts, A 
short 330s and 360s um, Electras and smaller cargo planes into EMA when I worked there. The, the Electras, wow, the Lockheed Electra, wasn't it? Who's cooking? You there. Steve Jeff, Cargo Jet Airways, uh, in from Cincinnati as well. Um, 10 minutes out. Wow, Ayrton beat him. US Air Force Osprey. Oh, okay. Uh, have you lost power, Jilly? Have you lost? Yes, you have. Yeah, you have, you have. Okay. Um, You're going to have to stand by on this. This is just a monitor issue, uh, which I need to swatch, swip, uh, sw swip out, swatch out, wish out, what? Do something with it, I don't know. <laughs> do something, my leg. Hold on. I'll get you another pizza. Ah. Don't lie. Stand by. Feedback in. Feedback in. on the bond battery. No, it won't be okay because it's on 8%. Okay, you're gonna have, you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna go blank, it's gonna go. Okay, okay. Oh. Okay, oh, don't worry about archive at the moment. Hold on, here we go. Okay, back on. Did it not? Hey! The interesting thing is that the battery on the, uh, the monitor, the monitor battery interesting now what I need to do is uh, disconnect that what's it what okay, what I need to do is I need to secure this lead here so that it doesn't get uh, The, 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 the fellow the, the fellow who streams on Sundays at, at uh, in LA. Oh, okay. What's his name? What's his name? Kevin. Airline videos. Kevin in LA. He's watching right now. Good to see you, mate. Um, I did give you a shout the other day, my friend. But uh, he's right in saying. Right, I just have to hope that this lead holds its. I'm just going to do a quick pan check. Stand by. Oh, that's perfect, mate. Yeah, that's perfect. Bosh. Right, let me 
let me uh, lock that out. Lock that out. Disconnect this. So that's interesting. That monitor battery. Goes from 80% down to now. So, how long have we been on, Julie? Well, yes. So, add that to what we had this morning. So I know that battery lasts for seven and a half hours. Okay, well that's 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 all right. So I've got 14 hours worth of power on those batteries combined. Then that's good. Car, right on the limit of that boy was. Wow, he's giving it some, isn't he? That's one of the one of the big super stocks, isn't it? Um, anyway, whatever, whatever. Uh, Justin Goddard. Good day to you, Justin. In a farmer's truck in a rubbery. Cargo jet four minutes out. Thank you uh, for that. Andrew Allen. Okay. McDormney about to enter finals. Zoe Black. Hello to you. Craig Whitmore. Not far from the location, Jerry is standing in Castle Donington. Further out towards the north was BMA headquarters at Donington Hall. There we go. Uh, Ranger Rat 1957, good day. After watching you out on the hotel roof in bad weather for many hours with that dedication to your fans, I had to rejoin. Ah, oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you for all the work at Ranger Rat 1957. Um, is it Kevin? Rab H saying it's cars. Okay, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he's on the limiters, isn't he? Yeah. No, they're not bikes, are they? That is cars. Sorry about that. <laughs> John 747 fan, don't give me a, ch a challenge. Stop waffling, you'll never last 14 hours. Well, we have done, haven't we? As soon as the show ends, I don't stop then, do I? Oh no, oh no. Charging, I think you oh. What's that, mate? Just a tail, isn't it? How long now, Judy? About two hours here, and uh, 
five hours and something up at Manchester. About seven and a half hours, something like that. Bit of a slow day. Oh, are you? Oh, fair enough. Fair play. Oh, didn't you? Oh, okay, there you go. It's good, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to switch this out quick. Stand by. Come on. She looks heavy, man. She looks real heavy. This is the X Air Canada. That hasn't even been really repainted since she, she came out of the workshops, the conversion unit. Can you still see Air Canada written on it? Look, Jilly, look. <laughs> Flipping heck. Yes. Wow, look at that old girl, man. Look at that. We're not getting that this time, no? Or, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. on it and everything man. that is insane wow that's a proper old girl and she's been around the world a few times man oh car uh, aero logic triple uh, seven main deck cargo door is closed They just don't even have time to take that aircraft out of service and, uh, and paint it. I mean, you're talking, you just don't have time. You just have to wait till she's due a, um, a D check or something like that until they have to take it out of service before they can, because um, they're just losing money. They don't have this spare aircraft available to, to, to put in its place. And they don't want to go and lease another one. I guess they could lease another one, but it's just like, um, what's the point? It's a workhorse, isn't it? Just let her carry on doing what she wants to do. It's brilliant, man. Oh, uh, stop there then, fella. <laughs> Flipping heck. He slammed the brakes on there, didn't he? Hey, hey, hey. Lovely old girl, man. Love that.
sling a load of Dulux on it. So freight now being loaded for Cincinnati. So that could be that could be uh, car parts, just general freight. Um, don't think there's perishables. All right, mate. How's it going? What are you doing? Was oh, that for me? <laughs> You're a legend, man. I feel like I feel like an animal at the zoo sometimes. Oh, look at this. What's this, man? Yeah. Thanks, man. I know what it is. How you doing? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't planned. We did Manchester this morning, and then um, I thought we'd come back and watch uh, watch a little bit of cargo movements. All right, mate. Yeah. See you in a bit. Cheers, Wayne. Mm. Sorry, folks. Sorry, 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 sorry. So we're hoping, oh, here we go. That uh, 300 is on push, here we go. Okay, what I need to do is move this unit forward a, a tad. Sorry, ladies and gents. There we go, here we go. <coughs> One big push. Talk. Come on, man. So he's the comms guy, the geezer in the uh, in the orange vest there. He's uh, he's got the lead. You can see the lead. Uh, he's linked up to the pilots. Um, they will give him the go ahead. He will then give the driver of the cab the thumbs up. And there we go. Some of these guys will fire up their engines on push. I did hear one time somebody telling me that it, it may aid the, the, the pushback depending upon which way he's pushing him back. CF6 engines, so it should be a nice start up ish. Maybe a bit. That error logic triple seven. It's ready to go, I think.
What's that, mate? No, nah, none of the passenger stuff going out, no. It's all just freight now. What's that, man? Oh, have you? Oh, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Nice alarm clock. Well, maybe not. <laughs> sent that to um, Ed. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's on text. I don't get it. I haven't got. I don't think I've got it on my phone. Or have I? Maybe I have. Maybe we have. Maybe we have. Yeah. I see the flaps being extended there, folks. Now, Boeing and uh, Boeing and Airbus have different flap settings. Uh, flaps one, two, three, and four, I think, on. Um, Uh, on on one and uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 um, on another in degrees and just number settings one way or the other I think Andy Johnson it's empty so should go up like a rocket well I don't know if she is empty um, because when we got here her, uh, her cargo door was shut so she was either already loaded or um, or uh, like you say, she's empty. But really, when you think about it, uh, a cargo airline would not want to operate an aircraft empty. Timmy Toothpicks, good afternoon to you. John 747 fan Skinner. Okay, sorry, here we go. 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 30 on a Boeing 757, 767, Craig Whitmore saying. Okay, here we go. Now, he will taxi to the end of that pan there, and then make a left-hand turn. He's got a bit of a ramp that he has to go up, so you get a, a little bit of a power up on the engines, which is always nice because it's right in front of us. There it goes now, left turn Clyde. Kinda didn't need it because he was carrying enough speed and turned it just right that he didn't need to give it any more power up. The 
again, another indication as to how heavy or light she is will uh, be determined by the um, by whether she goes out intersect or those old CF6s. As in the uh, last two digits, or ASMO. Good, good job it isn't BO, isn't it? Oi, mate, you should have been in by 10 o'clock, son. A few people turning up, so it's going to get quite busy. I think. Is it? What? Have you got anything? Uh, are we able to? I know I've got about five million flies buzzing above me head right now. Is there a logic? Uh, access door is also closed up. I think. All the um. Say it, Yeah, that left, uh, There you go, mate. You've got a Ryanair 737 inbound. Not now, but in a bit. Oh, okay. Who's that? Who's that then? I think that 777. Let me just come back. I'll come back to you in a second, folks. Don't worry about it. I will keep my eye on it. He's going full length as well. I just want to see if the uh, APU is running on this triple. Is that running? I think it is. Is that running? It certainly would indicate that it is with all the uh, the wing lights on. Uh, is the yeah the door's closed? We just need to get those steps away and. Uh, Got no tug on her yet though. Ah, uh, you know what I think. Oh, I don't know though. Why would they leave the um, strobes on? Or the wing lights at least. Maybe she's uh Johnson, it won't intercept, but is only a positioning flight. To where? Interesting. Here she comes. So it is empty then.
Yeah, that happens to me as well. Just guess. Wow, that's gone in the cloud quick, hasn't it? Wow. Hey! Crazy. Crazy how quick she went up. I mean, that, what's the height of that cloud base? It's got to be 5,000 feet, isn't it? It's me in it. It's my. It's my fault that I called it the old banger, just because of English humour and uh, the fact that she's an old. She's an old design, not necessarily an old aircraft, but just an old design. And look at the design of her. She's. Uh, she's. Um, looks like a bit of an old. Um, you know, a crate. <laughs> Oh, Ian saying she's going to Paris. Keith Coventry loved the uh, reflections on the belly. Interesting to note those two outlets. I think they might have been uh, <coughs> um, uh, aircon packs or something like that. The outlet for the aircons or something like that. I don't know. Silver Surfer. Ian Snelling likes the shot of the gear up. Yes, that's what we want. That's the kind of shots I like. All right. Big shout out to Wayne. Bringing me the coffee. Legend. Popping in and out of focus, or is that all right? Is it all right? Liz Matthewman, wow, great undercarriage, fantastic. Great belly shot, Bical Pam. Simon Eyes, superb sound. Do you know, that's that's one thing that we're getting a lot of recently, Jilly, since we updated our mics and that superb sound yeah yeah if you're going to be serious in this game you've got to do you've got to do the right thing and get the right i mean mate honestly i'm I'm desperate to go to Lake Eneath. Can you imagine what Lake Eneath is going to sound like with this new mic? I mean, you're going to get, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Uh, Adam Stokes loved the shot of the landing gear going up as well. It was, it was, it was just a perfect angle, wasn't it, to get that? I think it worked perfectly. Bobby Fitzsimmons. Uh, Ted Marsh, yes, just the um, just the A3, uh, the A300. No, none, of, none of the other ones are old bangers, you know. Even, even, even though uh, probably I'd imagine some of the 757s that they're using are probably older than the A300s. Uh, oh, Russ Bucket, don't worry about the mini rolls, my, uh, my friend. Um, tell your mum to stay where she is. I've already. Um, uh, I've already had a, a delivery of mini rolls earlier on and I've already stuffed five down my neck. Um, who is it who brought them to me? Um, oh man, it's the second time he's done that, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Uh, Mark Wyatt, Polar 767, just gone over me in Preston. With you soon. Alan Gale, beautiful. Um, Bobby Fitzsimmons, Lee Redman on the big screen TV, old banger laughing face. 
CF6 uh, Craig Whitmore or Pratt & Whitney PW4000 engines on the A300-600R. Uh, I, I called them as, oh, I called them as CF6, but they may have been PW, PNWs. Um, Oh, hello, we have a tug, we have a tug, we have a tug. Is this the tug for our triple? Go on, son, turn right, turn right. No. And she's going to come in and do a loop. Oh, is she heading down to the jumbo? No, heading down to the jumbo. He's just lurking, isn't he? Anyone for a tow? Anyone for a tow? Bring out your dead. Not dead yet. Yeah, I don't think that uh, I don't think that aerologic triple's going anywhere uh, just yet. Even though her uh, wing lights are on, crew doors closed, so. Um, Maybe the crew were waiting for, um, maybe we're waiting for a crew change, I don't know. But it's uh, it's not worthy of a crew change, is it? Unless it's going up um, overseas and uh, it's such a short haul trip. Um, it's only come from Schiphol, so can't think that uh, doing anything long haul so right. oh hello come on mate come on has that tug has that has that has that tug gone off hello hello I, I was I, I was saying has it gone down it's gone down for the jumbo Jilly he's hooking up the jumbo tugs hooking up on the jumbo tugs hooking up on the jumbo marvelous splendid Tug took it up in a jumbo. Tug took it up in a jumbo. Right, got that. Tug took it up in a jumbo. Tug took it up in a jumbo, sir. Thanks, sir. Tug took it up in a jumbo. <laughs> What's that? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to. You've got to. Come on, guys. We can't. Uh... Did he? Put... Yeah, there he is. Yeah, you can see his big wheel there. Look, he's just hiding there. Look, he's hiding there. Well, it's not going to be long now. We'll get this jumbo going, and then, um, and then we'll. Uh... Then it's time to go home. Uh, Ian. Uh, UPS inbound, 20 minutes, so we'll get that. And we'll get the Polar, 767, yes, we'll get that. John Godson called, time for takeoff, it is indeed. <laughs> now look here, Wilson. Crew door closes, ladies and gents. We're uh, we're in business. Main cargo deck door has been closed. Looks like all the uh... oh, is there a scissor? Is there a scissor lift over? There's still a scissor list lift um, offloading from belly freight there. So not just yet, I don't think. But they have got the tug ready, and they would not bring. In fact, look, the um, the cones are being moved as well. So, um, just a little bit more freight. It's not, um, it's not a big operation. I think that's a crew bus, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so that uh, scissor 
left now. What's that? What you got? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have to speak to um, Yerwin, because uh, I spoke to Yerwin last week. Everything was organised airside for the Cargologic uh, gig. So it could be um, that we could do a, 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 an evening gig here once again airside with, uh, with the crew at um, East Midlands. Yerwin, his name is. He's hammering that car around that track, isn't he? That could be like, um, it could be anything, couldn't it? Could be a roadster. Augusta Vogel. Hello, Augusta Vogel. Got that uh, clouds going that way um, because it looks like some pretty gnarly weather uh, to my east. Twenty minutes for the uh, UPS 767. A brown tail is inbound. Hodgie, yeah, I've seen that. Um, Star Air 767 just getting ready to depart Belfast. 32 years old. There's an old, old, there's an old banger for you. Um, but um, yeah, I guess I called the DHL 300 the old banger. That was way back in the early days of Big Jet TV, wasn't it? At Heathrow, when 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 you used to get it coming in, and I used to make fun of it. Oh, here it comes! Boing, boing, boing. Bits flying off of it and all that. When there's nothing, it's, it's it's just not true at all. But it's just a bit of fun. Um, but. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we were talking about the meteor and the vampire earlier on, on weren't we, folks? And uh, right here at um, East Midlands, there is a static park. Um, and I think that is possibly, is that the vampire, the twin boom right there? Uh, the twin boom, I think. Um, and then there's the uh, Gloucester meteor, um, wherever they are. It's either... Yeah, possibly what with the Victor Lima on it, or yeah, yeah, that might be the meteor. Uh, I think that that one with the um, the red, the your orange pods. Uh, someone's going to know about that, but I think that's the vampire uh, with the twin boom. Yeah, and then of course you've got the Nimrod, the A A R Nimrod right there. Great place to visit, and we'll have to visit there at some point um, at East Midlands. Um, Visitors Park, I'm guessing you'd call it. Um, a great place to visit, and um, a, a nice big grass mound as well over there, where I'm, I have no doubt, in fact, they've got, uh, they've got um, seating over there as well, where you can sit out on the grass. Um, there's a nice big mound over here as well. So, you know, Bosch. I think they might be a little ways off from uh, hooking this thing up, you know. The, um, I think he might have backed up to it. That's about as far as he's got. Have they, uh, Finished at the back, yeah. I think they're completely clear at the back now. Looks like she's had a bit of a wash, actually. 
Her um, rear end is uh, is quite white compared to uh, how grubby uh, a white 747 freighter, a work dog like that, would look. And of course, the access steps up to the flight deck. You see where he's stepping there, right in front of him there is a set of steps, almost vertical, uh, going up to the, um, the crew rest area. Turn left, and uh, then you're into the cockpit. Oh, blind, I am lucky, man. This is definitely some... Have you, are you able to look on, um, on precipitation radar uh, to see whether or not there's massive precipitation to my east? Looks like it. Might you see a little bit of lightning in there? <laughs> Talking like that for <laughs> stupid boy. Uh, vampire, Jet Provost, Hunter, Canberra, Nimrod, Varsity, Alan Gale saying. Uh, Jay Bryson, yeah, there you go. Um, a static outdoor museum. Uh, one with VL on the tail is a Hawker Hunter. The one with the orange tip tanks is a Jet Provost. Nigel, thank you for that. Andy G. 767 on finals, Aviation Gamer. Yeah, we got it. And uh, I've seen recently a few. Um, I've seen recently a few videos of, uh, of um, some very um, dodgy approaches into East Midlands with the wipers going be do be do be do be do and the uh, and big bumpy um, approach crosswinds and all that sort of thing. Um, even though right now it's a very uh, light breeze, more a sort of like. Uh, North easterly, is yeah. it? Is it a north easterly? Yeah, slight north east. Uh, is it north westerly? Is it? Is it? Uh, no, north. Oh, uh, north westerly. Okay, yeah, yeah. North west is it's uh, it's coming from the north west, right? Okay. <laughs> Look at him coming through it. You think you're going to get me? Well, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Dragging it, dragging the rain behind him. Wow. On her. Is this a 300 then? Listen to her, man. So the uh, cargo deck door now open on the uh, Aerologic once again, so back to work by the looks of it.
else is that? Is that the Ryanair 737 on finals, Jilly? Yeah, that's all moisture from coming through that cloud, I think. That's all moisture, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's been in the freezer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you get the brake dust because obviously the last place that that moisture is gonna go from is gonna be the tail. And that's why the tail is where it all goes back to and that's all the brake dust um, that, uh, that collates on the back of the uh, tail section there and also on the back of the flaps. Hence dirty flaps, it's sit a while, it's sit a while. Yeah. Yeah, this 737 is doing the same thing basically. Might get a little bit of a windscreen wiper action here with this, uh, this landing 7.3. Badly out of focus. Yeah, it's this setting. Five minutes out. Zig Games, thanks mate, Angela Cooper, there's also a Vulcan there, I've just reopened Google, East Midlands Aero Park, there we go, there is a Vulcan there isn't there, just not able to uh, see it at the moment, it's tucked around the corner there. Uh, Craig Whitmore, there's a viewing mound to the right of a DHL building, yes there is, uh, however, it's, I don't think it's, I can take the van up there, I think it's a it's only accessible by foot, isn't it? Mark Hudson, not a museum, just an open park with a shed. <laughs> okay. 
today I am mainly um, Alan Davis uh, generally no I mean a Prater that has been converted a passenger aircraft where the seats have been taken out and it's been converted into a temporary freighter um, that would be um, the main deck would only be um, uh, used for cardboard boxes which would be stacked into pallets which would then be strapped down um, they wouldn't um, change a, um, a pure freighter back into a cargo uh, into a passenger jet obviously um, because of the complexities of the cargo door etc um, however uh, they will convert a temporarily converted Praetor aircraft back to passenger um, near problem at all laddie Mark White UPS 767 on approach about 15 minutes out leave it out numbers like G2 uh, I don't know what uh, we're referring to there she looks like she's got a layer of frost on her that's for sure uh, Joe Patton we parked at the ramp just next to the hill okay I'd just be a little bit wary of parking around an airport. You've got to be very, very careful. Police don't like it, um, especially me, with me and me bleeding van. Uh, Derek Carter, thank you very much indeed. Two great shows and great days entertainment. Thank you, Derek, for your company. Polar to par. Hopefully I'll be getting a few of those tomorrow afternoon when I tee off. Oh, Christopher Noel can't wait to see Cargo Jet's new 777 Freighter next year. Yes. Um, is that, that's a 200 isn't it I think. Oh, okay. Um, Mac All-Star. Don't forget the good old QC variants of the 73 Classic and 146. Okay, BAE 146s. Uh, they could go from full freight to passenger easily. Uh, yes, I think that's. I think that. I. 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 I know what you're saying now. I'm. I'm generally talking about these particular aircraft here. I think they had uh, dual purpose, didn't they? Um, some of those aircraft that you're talking about. Uh, uh, Mac Alt Star um, uh, in terms of they could be used as either a passenger or a freighter aircraft. Um, I'm talking about these aircraft that have been uh, either um, converted, well these aircraft that have been converted uh, from passenger to freight or in some circumstances where it is just a pure freighter out of the factory. Oh, hello, hello, hold on a minute, wait a minute, I see a light, I see, I see no ships, uh, do we have, yes, I think we're ready for pushback on this jumbo, uh, we do have the um, anti-collisions are on, and I hear that APU from here, you can even hear that APU from here, and that alone on its own is a very powerful jet engine. For once in my life. I have someone to talk to, someone who leaves me alone. Jockey boy, uh, that A380 takeoff today at Manchester was amazing. Yeah, you know, if you can have a dream tonight, dream about that thing coming towards you, eh? Wow. Charlie Howes, a frost question mark. It's 93 here in Atlanta. 
Yes, but hey, Charlie, even an aircraft landing Atlanta in Atlanta coming in from uh, 40,000 feet, he's, um, he's, just had, uh, he's just gone through minus, um, minus 50 plus degrees uh, at 40,000 feet, hasn't he? Um, so he's come down from a dizzy height. She's not hooked up yet. Clear push back and start. Clear push and start, I think is what they say. Okay. Coming through all that precip as well. Oh, this is going to be a good start up. All this, all the. Um, anti-collisions, all the strobes, the whole flipping thing's lit up now. Ready to rock and roll and here we go. I think he's just got the clearance, Clarence, for push and start. Now she may start her number one. It's a big old lump to push back in it. Forty thousand feet. Don't worry, don't worry, I've got it folks. I know, I've got it.
left turn. And we'll go all the way down to the east hub. Forgive me folks, I'm just going to switch this quick. Sorry about that, just wanted to do that because uh, nicely with this without it popping out of focus. But, uh, what I am going to do is I'm just going to uh, come back. Although it's beautiful to watch that UPS 767. Just look at this thing. Fired up and ready to roll. 747 freighter. Is she headed back to Cincinnati? Do we know? So too, young lady. <laughs> Splashed in sunlight. What's that? Done an F and F check yet? <laughs> Who's cat? Oh, was it? Brilliant. He's going to fire that thing up for a big right-hand turn, isn't he? Here she goes.
see where the nose opens up there, folks. You can just about see zero tolerance, literally, where that nose, that hinged nose meets the uh, meets the front end. And that also confirms it as being a fully fledged factory built freighter. Uh, you do not get freighter conversions with a hinged nose. Shout out big nose. You call me big nose one more time. Look at that shot. Jumbo jet ladies and gentlemen. What's this on finals? 737, okay, West Atlantic, okay, so I saw a lot of these. This will also head down to the um, eastern sector. Toronto, isn't it? Yeah, YYZ, isn't it? Ah. Oh. Isn't that nice? Kelly, did you say? Lake Kelly, is it? Blake Kelly. Okay, Blake Kelly is a new member tuning in from YYZ Toronto, somewhere we're hoping to uh, visit in the, uh, maybe even later this year. Well, as soon as possible, really. I think, to be honest with you, let's just see how Miami goes. <laughs> Miami works out all right, and we know the, we know the procedures in terms of you know, because it, it's, it's all different now, isn't it? When I travel overseas, going to have to, you know, PCR tests here, PCR tests there, all this kind of blah, blah and whatever. Um, once we know the procedures and we're all set on that and uh, the United States is, uh, is, is clear to travel, um, then um, we're going to start booking up at least once a month, folks, to travel to America, if it works. That's what the plan was and it always has been. <laughs> we would have been out to America. God knows how many times um, had it had it not been for that for the yeah Canada is another is another kettle of fish isn't it yeah so West Atlantic folks um, these guys a freight a freighting concern. In from Ireland, I think. Are they? Are they? Are these these guys are coming. In? Oh, oh, it's in from Jersey. Is it right? Okay. We were invited by West Atlantic, weren't we, to do a whole evening with them? Still could do that quite easily if we wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. wasn't good news for uh, Canada a while back, was it? Yeah, that's really good. That's really good, man. That's really good. Because we love Canada, man. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, did a very sh short interview, but very good interview with uh, one of the pilots with West Atlantic, uh, Irish uh, pilot, last time we were here, airside. Just generally going over what his uh, nighttime operations were. I think it was, what was it, three times? Three times into, into doing um, three legs. Didn't they do three legs in one night or something like that? With West Atlantic. Yeah, back and forth, yeah. From Dublin or wherever it was. What's this landing now? Is this a prop? Is this a prop? 
is it a private? Is it private? Oh, yeah, it's a little Cessna or something like that, isn't it? Little uh, beach craft or. Bloody hell. I just want to leave this setting on because the jumbo. Uh, if I if if when I pan it will go out of focus if I leave it on that on the um, on the other setting. Yeah. Okay, jumbo. Clear takeoff. And uh, this is the curtain call, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm just going to do. I'm going to do the. Um, I'm going to do the PTC um, on the um, new Lavellias, Jilly. Your Majesty, the skies are yours. shot as well oh my goodness me oh my goodness me look at that oh look at that silhouette jelly man almost brings a tear to me eye that does you are so beautiful. <laughs> I can't control it. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, 20 seconds after we see it. I mean, that takeoff was just, I mean, seeing that, the 380 today, the 380 today, uh, coming in and going out and then seeing this at the end of the day is just, there's just nothing better, is there? I'm just keeping on it just in case we get a bit of wing fluff. Yeah, it's, it's westbound, definitely. She might slice a hole in the cloud. Come on, son, because stick with it. Oh, no, no, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, she's gone. Oh, folks, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Right, now, let me just do something here quick. Uh, audio's going to go off and on again.
no, I've done that. I've done it in the wrong one. Hold on a minute. <laughs> you stupid boy. Okay. <laughs> okay, check, check. One, two, one, two. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, do, we'll, we'll get that 767. <laughs> I just say it's a DHL 767 turning on to finals. I've got to do that, haven't I? Um, hey, how about that then? Uh, wow, wow, folks. Uh, how's that audio, Jilly? How's that audio? Is that okay? Is that Lavelia all right? Okay. Two 767s. Okay, two 767s in 10 minutes, uh, Mark Wyatt. Uh, for the sake of 10 minutes, for the sake of 10 minutes, it's got to be done, hasn't it? Um, but just before I go, folks, um, actually busting for the loo, I, I've got to say, I need a wee, but I'm just going to have to hold on. <laughs> uh, but uh, wow, what a day we've had, folks. Um, it's been a long one, uh, but it's worth it for you just to see the kind of comments that we get here, uh, the support that we've got from you and, uh, and the joy that we bring you. That's what it's all about, bringing you joy. Um, uh, with JF Bryson, it's not the end yet. Uh, <laughs> great ending shot. Um, it's not the end yet. Remember, folks, it ain't over till the screen goes blank. Um, sealed W. Uh, thanks again, Jerry and Jilly, for another fantastic day. See, there's a lot of people who come out of the woodwork at the end of the day uh, that, that, that didn't get involved uh, in, the, in the chat um, during the day, but um, are now coming out to say thank you, and thank you very much indeed for supporting us and being there for, for, uh, during the day. Uh, Rab H, Chicky Armitage, John Grimm. GP, can you turn that audio down? I'm hearing myself double. Yeah. I'm... Okay, I know I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. John Godson, spot on. Martin Smith, five by five. Uh, Captain T, perfect audio. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Liz Matthewman, thank you very much indeed. Big shout out to Jilly, by the way, folks. Don't forget, even though, I mean, okay, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. I'll give Jilly a call about f three hours later. She's up and ready uh, at her station, ready to push the buttons and do all the boop, 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 and all that to get this feed across to you. So, uh, Jilly, a uh, big thanks to you. Thanks to Lee as well. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Um, and um, uh, um, to, to Lee and to um, Trish as well. Uh, TCC, uh, my, day, my work day was very good thanks to today's shows. There we go, Keith Cornell, Trone Hunter, uh, Mark Hudson, six fantastic shows today. Thank you very much indeed. Alan Gale, a great day's entertainment, Jenny. Di dinner time now. Take care, everyone. Alan Gale, take care. We're going to get these last two 767s. There's a big cell over there. There's one of them I can see now. Um, Paul Hodgson, uh, that second one is Star Air. So we've got, what have we got? Did you say DHL? Um, one's a DH. One's a DHL, so she'll park up over there, and uh, the other one is Star Air. Um, so DHL will be over there. Star Air will park down on the um, on the east side. Um, oh, thank you, Lucy. Um, Stevie Luscombe, Carol Crozier, fantastic day indeed. Jockey Boy, great to have you here, uh, Jockey Boy, along with all our other new members today. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Yousaf, uh, if you're going to look, if you're looking at buying some um, some some um, some uh, merchandise, then go and have a look in the store. Have a look, little look around the store. See what you fancy. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in there. To be honest with you, um, tire not in it. <laughs> um, what a day! I didn't manage to do any of my important things I was supposed to do today. Helly M saying, um, uh, Marcus, Jess, Matthew Clark, Sandy Humby, Donald Roy, uh, Abby Garvey, Basil Sims, Aviation Gamer, Martin Smith, Ian Harris, Joe Thompson. Thank you very much indeed for the amazing show, Stevie Luscombe. Thanks to everybody who came and said hello to me today uh, by the way folks um, uh, it's too many people to mention but uh, all the great guys uh, thank you once again to Terry at, uh, at the airport pub up at Manchester and what a what a uh, what a fantastic um, uh, menu that they've got there folks and uh, if you remember if you were with us earlier on he came up with the menu which is just a, a fantastic menu that they offer uh, I, I don't know why I brought it home with me 
<laughs> but that's the way it is. Uh, Michelle 89. See how this, um, see how this uh, aircraft sounds on the uh, Lavellia mic, Jilly. Uh, Ant W. Thank you very much indeed. Matt Barkstrom, David Bowman, uh, Andy RC, ES, Robert Mendez, um, Charlie Hauser. Don't forget, folks, we're going to be in Miami uh, next month. Uh, in June um, so not long to go until we're out in the United States of America and we're able to bring you some stuff out there all for our first class and super class members of course um, and here we go and uh, executive members are able to watch on replay uh, one week after uh, by the way folks I'm just going to quickly change this so that I can get this because it doesn't like it they don't like it up so okay here we go now look how well. That was me just changing the thing fong. DHL seven sixty seven. Uh I'm not whispering, no. No. Okay, let me switch back to the other one. Switch back to that one. Okay, I've moved it, Jilly. So it's back on. It's back on the. It's back on the radio mic. It's back on the radio mic. Oh, sorry about that. Should be on the radio mic now. Yeah, should be on the radio mic. No idea, mate. That's peculiar, isn't it? It's quieter but clearer. That's got to be a bond related issue, then, isn't it? That's got to be bond related. That's got to be the output. think so yeah but when I switched when I switched from the from the main remote mic yeah to the Lavellia it was fine wasn't it yeah it was fine Try that again. Try that again. I mean, I don't think it can be any kind of interference. That's the back on the Lavellia, yeah? Always Warren Barnes is a new member. Welcome, Warren. What's happened there? Is it, is, is it, is it quiet again or is it still quiet? How's the Lavellia, Jilly? I'm on the Lavellia now. Okay, but just let me switch out. Let me switch back to the um, to the remote standby. I just want to see what happens because onto the onto the remote. There we go. We're on the remote now.
Does it really? It's Nicky Lauder. <laughs> got to got to think about these folks on the ground as well, ladies and gents. Can't do anything about people talking nearby. Blimey. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mouse in the bushes there. Can you stop squeaking? Thank you. I want all the birds to stop tweeting now, please. Thank you. Uh, oh, that's why, yeah, because the mic is closer to me, isn't it? Yeah, okay. We're on the remote now. We're on the remote. We're on the remote mic now. Okay, so that's the reason why it sounds louder and, and yeah. And I can adjust that volume level. This is Star Air, ladies and gentlemen. Saw a lot of these at... Uh, Cologne, didn't we? Was it? Um, it was. Is it? Well, how many more? What, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, you Oh my good god, it's 20 to 9, Jilly, mate. I've got to get, I've got, you know, it's going to be 10 o'clock, it's going to be to half 10 by the time I get home. I haven't had any dinner yet. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will, I will. Just, um, right, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back, folks. We'll come back. Right, okay. Um, how can we, uh, how can we fade this out and make it a nice fade out? Let's just, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to stop it on a plane moving. Let's just uh, stick it over there and um, say cheerio, <laughs> folks. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for your co your your, uh, your time today and um, your uh, your wonderful. Um, it's it's just lovely having you with us. That, I t that aerologic's closed up again. Just let me double check that she hasn't got a, uh, a tug attached. Hold on. No. <gasps> Wait a minute. What's that? That is a tug. That is a tug. No, 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 no. 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 Let's just... Um, Let's just let's get these two arrivals. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you are awful. What's that? Oh, where's he now? Is this a freighter? So where is this? Is regional? This is a proper regional aircraft, isn't it? Oh, I know. It's like a Saab sort of aircraft, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now watch the watch the props reverse. Oh, look at the uh, the props. They're going full speed, Julie. That's got to be the light. That's got to be something to do with the light, isn't it?
So this is the uh, this is really when it starts to hot up in terms of the aircraft coming in. This is West Atlantic as well, isn't it? Is this West Atlantic? Oh, blue. Is it West Atlantic or? Okay. This one in from Guernsey, ladies and gents. West Atlantic UK. Okay, so that's West Air Europe. Have a load of people gone because they thought that I was going and I'm still on. They're still there, right? Okay. <laughs> you know the score, you, you lot. Yeah, yeah. It's never over till it's literally over, till it goes blank and you can hear no more. Um, especially when you've got a triple seven that looks like it's uh, imminently um, ready for uh, for push and start. Let's just have another look. Oh, that jumbo! Oh, yeah, he's definitely hooking up now. Who was waving? Who was waving? Did he? Did he really? He gave you a wave, uh, your pal Palpatine said. He, he gave us a wave. How did he know we were here? It must be the van, man. It must be the van. It is a dirty, great big sign on the side, doesn't it? So, oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. The ops room, the ops room sometimes. The ops rooms, don't they? <laughs> okay. Now, a lot of this stuff, you see, will get... Um, split down into packages and then go on to the long haul aircraft as well a bit like the um there we go this is new oh this is new oh blimey yeah no this is definitely new oh yeah that's a boeing style font on the tail there nice Oh, this is smart. Oh, we've definitely got to do something with West Atlantic, can we? First 800 Boeing commemorate first converted freighter. Wow! Yeah, wow! That's the first ever. Oh, Ben Brown will like that for his records, wouldn't he? First ever Boeing. 737 800 freighter conversion. Wow. <laughs> He's going to lock the door, isn't he, Charge? He's going to lock the door. Put his big furry bum behind it. You're not coming in, mate. You'll slip a little demand note underneath the door. Cigarellos will definitely be involved in that demand notice. <laughs> Poor thing, man. If he splayed out on the ground, he could, he could, yeah. Triple seven is just every time I look at it, there's more stuff uh, ready. Tail light is on. That APU's running, isn't it? That APU is definitely running. Come on, boys, get that, get those, get that, get those. 
get the crew on and let's get the hell out of Dodge. Okay, here we are, another 737. That was a cool, that was a cool catch, that was. This is a first for us as well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not leaving till that triple seven goes out, I'm sorry. Must be uh, D8 on behalf of DHL then. And you know the reason why I want to watch that triple seven go? It's because we're going to get that. folks um, excess bleed air going out of the uh, for the air start systems Right, here we go. Crew steps have been moved for the Aerologic and we're clear to push and start. Oh no, we haven't. Oh yeah, crew, crew door is closed. So that would uh, signify that we are ready to push and start. Get that thing hooked up, boys. We want to get that big Here we go, here we go. It's happening, it's happening. Now this is definitely the last one of the day, okay? Leg it all lumpy. GE115B uh, startup, ladies and gents. Not just any old GE90. This is the big boy, the big daddy of the, of the, uh, the General Electric variant. Don't get much bigger than this. They will sometimes fire the engine, one engine up on pushback to actually help the tug to reduce the um but I don't see how that uh, uh Samir is a new member welcome Samir joining late in the day but um good to have you with us Dun. okay gonna switch back switching back Sorry about that. Aerologic. 
Rabbi heard that before two hours ago. Way you little. I think my blad has just given up. It's like, well, mate, you know, that's it. Charlie Owls at AN22 inbound. Okay. Anti-collisions anti are now on and active. You wanted to start up, you're gonna get it. Concord inbound one out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Sharpsy. I mean, if the neighbours were there, I would have said, can you can you nip round and just give him some sprinkle of biscuits? He's all right. Oh, he's going to give he's going to give it the big like violins when I get in there, isn't he? Lying on his back like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yeah. No, no, he won't. No, he'll be sitting on that bottom step, just staring at me. No, where the hell have you been? Here we go, Aerologic, 777, freighter. She's a pure freighter as well, folks. Here we go, listen to this startup noise. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like we were back at Cologne. Hear the, uh, the bleed air. It's an air start system. Air fed from the APU at the back of the aircraft into the engine, turn the fans, turn the, um, internal components of the engine here we go
Okay, folks, we're going to go for a funky closeout shot here. So we're going to follow this one out, Jilly. And then as she got, as she, as she, no, 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 no. I'll call the cut, I'll call the cut, yeah? Okay, cut. Oh, I'm only joking. <laughs> but you think it. <laughs> he would never do that, man. Oh, now we're going to get this a head on. We're going to get a head on shot here as well. Might get a little bit of a. Uh, a boost from the engines here because he's quite slow turning making this turn so he might get a bit of a power up here we go oh look at that lighting look at the lighting oh it's pink I'm glad I stayed for this. Look at that, she's a it's, it's almost Branifesque, isn't it? In that pink.
Oh, look at this. Shot. God. Oh, here we go. 